Is Cody Rhodes retiring from wrestling? What up, Mark? Guys, let's get into this AEW Homecoming the episode of Dynamite. Let's get into our reaction and review to this show, which is the big debut of Malachi Black versus Cody Rhodes as the main event, the labors of Jericho, Chris Jericho versus Hoovy the Juice, and more. So the show starts off with the labors of Jericho, chapter three. And it's the mm -hmm. Jews who took a row versus Chris Jericho, a classic matchup from WCW days, uh, the Cruiserweight title and all that good stuff. So we got this match. It kind of was what it was. I was kind of hoping for more, but both guys really can't do what they used to, especially Hoovy. Uh, it's yeah. just not like as like what it was before. A couple weird spots that were kind of odd in this. They were kind of like didn't really yeah. mix that well. Uh, but in the end, Jericho gets to win, obviously, with a big Judas effect off the top row, which is an awesome spot. Um, and he gets to win. Then you have Wardlow attacking Chris Jericho. Revealed that Wardlow is labor number four and MJF will be ringside, which I don't know. The Nick Gage stuff, I, like I said, I always said it should have been the last labor because it's the craziest mm -hmm. one. Like you're going from Hoovy, then it's like Wardlow and then MJF on the outside. And they're like, what's five? It's got to be something crazy. So we'll see. We'll, yeah. we'll, with the time coming, we'll see what that ends up being. I mean, Part of me can, can go kind of either way, but I still feel like throwing Hoovy after Gage doesn't really flow all that yeah. well. I mean, maybe just like, I, I don't know, I guess Jericho, I'm, I'm sure Jericho had, had a lot of say and how this, this was lined up. I hope it was planned out accordingly, like they had it weeks in advance and not just every week we're going to come up with, with a new idea. But uh, yeah, Nick Gage probably should have been either fourth or fifth yep. or maybe third. Hooven two probably should have been one or two. Uh, but it's nice to see Hoovy out there, classic old school match in WCW, especially because that's the time when we were growing up and that's, that's the matches that, that we saw growing up. So it was nice to see that. But yeah, these guys weren't exactly in their prime. Uh, that, that's not a bad thing, but it wasn't like a, it wasn't a match that was like bigger than the last match, basically. All right. So the next thing on the show is a trios match. Now it's yes. uh, Daniel Garcia and 2.0, who is the formerly known as Ever Rise on NXT. They've shown up on AEW. AEW gets absolutely <laughs> everybody possible to show up on Dynamite Jeez. after a while. It's nuts. They're taking on the trio, the superstar trio of John Moxley, Eddie Kingston, Darby Allen, along with Sting. Um, and this is funny. I'll show you this clip. The how they subtle point to CM Punk as Darby Allen makes his entrance. They cut to the only son of a bitch in the crowd that has a CM Punk shirt. It's Sting from Seattle, Washington, wearing the 170 pounds, Darby. Punk shirt. They do that, obviously subtly hinting that CM Punk is coming to AEW's foregone yep. conclusion. Darby Allen will be his first opponent. The match kind of was what it was. It's just a way to get Moxley, Kingston, and Allen out there kicking ass and taking names. Um, and you know, the funny little face by Sting at the end of it uh, was pretty funny. Was that all four of them were kind of just there in the middle of the ring celebrating. They got the win. Not much to talk about. Yeah, Everrise was here. I was like, oh crap, NXT. But yeah. no, it was by AEW. I mean, just, it was what it was. Uh, the highlight of the match to me was the fact that. Um, Kingston was just marking out. It was like, this is fucking Sting. Like, it was like, I thought that was cool. I thought that was like, that's the way I would feel like if I were in the ring. Like, you know, there's a freaking legend. There should be more of that going yeah. on, especially with these iron guys. But hey, it was what it was. Yeah, it was what it was. The next thing we got on the show is Christian Cage versus The Blade. Uh, you know, Christian has his issues with Matt Hardy and the Matt Hardy family. Uh, he's taking on The Blade here. And it's interesting because they were hyping up the fact that he could be the number one contender. He's undefeated after if he wins this match. And Cage does win the match. The match is kind of whatever. Uh, but, you know... It, it all leads to Christian Cage becoming the number one contender. And seemingly, as the rumors we were hearing swirling around that with Adam Hangman Page losing that match, they kind of, you know, were swerving away or uh, coming away from that uh, planned had Adam Hangman Page versus Kenny Omega all out. And it seems we might be getting Christian Cage versus Kenny Omega at all out because after this, he would kind of claim as being the number one contender. He, obviously, they said he was and he's claiming that he's coming after the elite and coming after Kenny Omega, which receives a lot of boos from the crowd. People are not happy seemingly about Christian Cage taking the spot you know. of Hangman Page because it's a very WWE thing to do. Um, or and, TNA thing. Yeah, or TNA. And for whatever reason they're doing it, they're doing it, but they're kind of uh, diverting away from ha Adam Hangman Page here. Yeah, I mean, again, I just wish Christian was um, was in WWE with Edge yeah. at SummerSlam. That's kind of where I'm at. Uh, anything he does, I just feel like he doesn't really. I don't, I don't want to say he doesn't fit here. It's just it's not flowing. It's not, I mean, him versus Kenny is because the logical the logical choice is Hangman versus Kenny. It's the logical yes, choice. Yes, because like that's what we want to see. That's what we've been building for 18 months for. That's like when they were attacking. Like it's it's rights itself. This is like, like the big show. I'm not sure if if all or nothing or uh, whatever that, that all the, out the, the biggest. All out or whatever, or and double or nothing. You talk about double or nothing. Double or nothing. Yeah. yeah, like 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 which one is like the Mania or the SummerSlam, whatever. But this match is a big match. It needs to be on one of the big pay per views, and these are like they're big too. So it needs to be this. I mean, we can do Kenny versus Christian sometime else, or if Kenny's still champion after Hangman, then we can go to that. I'm okay with that, but we need to see this match. 
yeah, I don't know what they're holding off for or what their point of reason is for holding that match off, but that's what we got because, like I said, later on they have the the, the thing. Uh, they would have an interview with Hangman Page later on as well, and the Elite would come out mm-hmm. and beat him down. Then we have Frankie Kazarian, the Elite Killer Hunter, but he hunts none of them. He like you know they, they what are you saying like they swat him away like a fly basically. Yeah, he's he's basically like the Elite Fly Hunter. He just goes in there, hits one guy, they just smack around, get the hell out of here. Yeah, like, it sucks to be Frankie Kazarian right now because <laughs> he has this role as the Elite Hunter, but he does absolutely nothing in terms of thwarting no. the Elite. The Elite. It gets over on every single person every single week on every single episode of Dynamite. They have not been thwarted, not once. No. Uh, the elite, they continue to dominate. And, Which and, is fine because they're like the big heel group, so that's fine. But like, man, at least be like a little more threatening than yes. the elite killer or hunter or whatever the hell. Like, it's yeah. just it's not working. He does nothing whatsoever. No. But yeah, so seemingly, like I said, it, it was a chorus of boos that, you know, when Christian Cage kind of announced that he's coming after Kenny Omega, it was a chorus of boos he received because people want to see Hangman in that spot rather than Christian Cage, especially the fact that you yeah. were giving it to us and then you kind of just take it away and then you give yeah. uh christian which christian was brought in seemingly to kind of get that spot but then he kind of meandered down with a uh, matt hardy and all that stuff when he seemed like he was gonna get in- into the title picture quickly but next thing on the show dr Britt baker comes out she's gonna cut a, a interview with tony shivani oh, tony shivani interviews are so hilarious because he never really interviews anybody he gets like one sentence and like one question out and then it goes to hell yeah. after that so that, that's efficiency man that's yeah efficiency. pretty much so that's what we got here uh you know she comes out red velvet's the one that comes out and challenges her and it'll take place at the big Pittsburgh Rampage show, which is next week. So we got to run double duty tomorrow, uh, next week on Friday with SmackDown and Rampage, yeah. the first episode. So what we're going to get next week. Britt Baker versus Red Velvet. Yeah, I mean, again, we're trying to build a women's division, try to get Britt Baker some some competition. Slowly but surely, they'll start building it. Um, but yeah, it just, it, it's, it's just kind of was what it was. I mean, Rampage should be interesting next week. One hour show. I want to see the flow. I want to see like the feel. Is it going to feel different than then dynamite that's more what i'm interested in for next week yeah it's gonna it's interesting how it's gonna look and if it's gonna feel different from dynamite next thing yeah. was the big hangman page stuff that we talked about we had him in the dark order kind of having issues he does you know he's like uh, he's trying to step away from the dark order and they're kind of adhering to it at least uh evil uno and stu grayson are uh they came out they didn't help they were gonna help him against the elite but uh, stu grayson and evil uno said no let, leave him alone uh, they will get Stu Grayson and Evil Uno a shot at the Impact titles. They lost the match, so they don't get a chance against the AEW tag team titles, but they get an Impact title shot, which kind of shits on the Impact a little bit, just a little tiny bit more, right, than they already have been. Um, and then, obviously, the Elite Hunter Kazarian is, like, no, useless completely. Like, give him something, yeah. but kind of was what it was. But that was the segment there. Next thing we got was a TNT Championship match. Big shoddy Lee Johnson taking on... God, the God's chosen champion, uh, the the Redeemer, Miro, which is uh, just a man on an absolute tear in AEW, yeah. booked very, very well since the whole, um, you know, Kip Sabian garbage that he was getting the best man stuff. He's been mm-hmm. really, really well put together. Uh, Miro gets the win here. Um, it also helped Shadi Lee a little bit. He, you know, he looked pretty good in this match. He got his spots in, uh, but Miro's just a dominant champion. I kind of feel like, to be honest with you, Miro needs to be the first double champion in AEW history, hold the TNT and the AEW title at one time. He's that good yeah. right now and dominant that I think he needs to be in that spot. Yeah, I agree with you with that. He's like, they're booking him so well right now. It's not that we always need to book him, but yet be what he is, a complete monster, badass heel. Like, that's what he always needed to be, and this is what he's finally doing. And they really righted the ship. Like, I was kind of nervous. Like, they, that was a terrible way to come in. It wasn't good. None of it was really all that entertaining. They yep. had that terrible arcade match that was just awful. Um, and But they really, you know, just completely changed course, and they made him into a monster, and it's working, and it's perfect, and I love it. And... Just keep continuing with that, with, with pushing him, and I can see double or nothing time. Like you said he could be a double champ, whether it could, it could be a tag team plus the plus the team title, or just be the champion, Ultimate Warrior style double belts. I mean that'd be pretty interesting. It'll be cool stuff. I think he deserves. It. I think he's the one guy in there that's built well. Him and Jungle Boy, the two guys to me have been built very well in AEW. Yeah. Obviously, Miro had the kind of bumpy start. But it's picked up, and I think him and Jungle Boy have been the best booked guys in AEW, and obviously uh, Britt Baker as for the women. Um, next yeah. thing, so it's a eliminator match to see who gets uh, NWA Women's Title match. So they're putting the NWA Women's Title out there, and it's for the number one contendership tonight. It's the Bunny versus Legit Layla Hirsch. The match is kind of wonky. I mean, I thought it was funny when Hirsch missed that. Um, you know, I don't know if it was inte- the, the way the announcers made it seem like it wasn't intentional. He just missed this moonsault completely, and the Bunny didn't even move. So I thought it was kind of funny. Um, but 
in the end, I felt like there was too many people involved in this whole thing because you had the Hardy family, you had for some reason uh, the best friends with Chris Statland, they had Nyla Rose out there, and then there's just a lot of people outside. You had Camille, mm -hmm. who was the new NW Women's Champion. So in the end, Hirsch gets the win, and she'll face Camille uh, whenever that's supposed to happen. Yeah, I mean, this is just kind of show AW loves putting in other companies, showing the NWA, showing not so much TNA. I think NWA gets more and more. Yeah, more big like time. Than TNA does. So there's that. But uh, again, so something tells me they should just sign these girls and put them on the AEW roster officially and just have more of an AEW women's division be a little more important instead of just, I, I get the whole, you want to put other companies and let, let them shine, but this is your show. Why, why, why is there better feuds right now? More interesting feuds going on with the NWA championship on your, on your show. It's just like when, when your women's division is kind of floundering around a little bit, it's, it's one star. So I don't know. I just, I didn't love this. Yeah, I didn't love it either. It kind of was what it was. But the next thing on the show was the big main event, the debut of Malachi Black in ring versus Cody Rose. He comes out first, Malachi Black, with an interesting getup. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool looking, I guess. Um, Cody Rose still kind of using the whole big USA gimmick. Uh, he comes out. Um, and the match is just a one-sided squash match where yeah. it, uh, the Malachi Black obliterates Cody Rose. Smart move to do is to do that because it's his first match. And he's already getting the big match against Cody in his first match. Pretty much a statement match to make uh, Malachi Black a kind of like a, a main figure on the show. Um, and it was this big spot right here that ended up being the highlight of the night. What a maneuver! So that big spot right there, the big perfectly timed kick uh, to Cody Rhodes on top of the rope, on uh, top of the turnbuckle. When he, I mean, he kind of like you know really sold the jump off into the table, but it was what it was. It was a it was a, it was a, it was a solid spot. It was very well timed by Malachi Black, and then the big black mask kick that he hit, uh, you know, him in the face with and got the win with was perfectly timed, perfectly sold by Ken, uh, by Cody Rhodes as he hit the ground. Um, and it's interesting because like afterwards he kind of walks away, and then you know you have Shivani pulling his Joe Rogan impression and kind of just trying to do the interview with the guy down sitting on his ass. Um, and he's interviewing him, and then obviously he takes the mic away from Tony Schiavone because Tony Schiavone never interviews anybody. And then it's seemingly this man is going to retire Cody Rhodes. He's taking off his boots, going to leave him in the ring. He gets attacked by Malachi Black. By hey, wait a minute. No. Oh! Malachi Black from behind. Oh, Black from behind. Fine Malachi first. Black by with the crutch. Um, so is he retiring? I don't really know because then you have this spot at the end. But... Uh, what does this lead for Malachi Black in the future? Uh, but again, is this man retiring? What does this lead to next? Yeah, I thought it was a perfect way to, to bring in Malachi Black in his first match, destroy um, Cody Rhodes, kind of 2005 WrestleMania, Triple H versus Batista, where Batista just dismantled um, Triple H, kind of that same feel. So that's it's a good look. It's keep him strong, keep him powerful, come in and beat the number one guy in the company. I mean, Kenny is, but you know, like this is like the, the boss, the head guy. He's, he's a Triple H of of a wa whether you like it or not um but it and it, and it builds perfect because cody's a made guy especially with that crowd they love him that's their guy like he he is a w so it just it, it was perfect to do it that way i like like the sappy uh you know love song to the fans and aw and what we built and kind of showing and kind of breaking kayfabe and going with the whole evp fights that we the rumors on whether he was playing to it or whether it was true whatever the case may be i did like that for a second there they got me that that he was gonna you know go away for a while but no i think all points lead to a big main event match at or you know the semi-main something like that at the at, at, at the big pay-per-view yeah i think that's where it's going too but um really quickly i want to book something for malachi black <laughs> He's gonna him! So, uh, after he attacks Cody Rose, after Cody Rose takes his boot off, he kind of grabs one of the boots. Now, it'd be kind of interesting if they were to book Malachi Black in this kind of concept. As he defeats his enemies, uh, he has a souvenir from each guy. Similar to how, like, in The Walking Dead, some guy would have, like, uh, pieces of zombies on around his neck or something like that. Or the Predators. Uh, or the Predator or something like that. He would keep the skulls. Stuff like that. Maybe he keeps remnants of his opponent. So, for Cody's uh, case, he keeps Cody's boots. And he, when he cuts his promos in his uh, specific place, kind of like the Dark Father vignettes that he did in that room, he can have showcased his uh, trophies from each opponent that he's beat because he has that dark, mysterious, uh, evil 
cool side to him character wise so i think this might elevate that and give a little layer to it by him keeping certain remnants of those individuals that he's beat uh whether it be i don't know anything it could be it could be hair it could be uh it could be shorts it could be anything it could be a jacket it could be something off his yeah. opponents i think it might be a nice little uh caveat to his character because again he is that dark mysterious evil character uh you know kind of supernatural if you if you may uh so i think that might be a nice little touch to it so like in the end of this feud maybe he keeps the boots of him like he destroys him in the ring and then removes his boots and just walks away with them as a remnant as like a trophy as to who uh he's defeated i think it might be a little solid thing for uh malachi black in the future but uh that's me booking a little piece of malachi black yeah i think that's a great call i think that's something very interesting i think that's a good way to like keep him weird keep him mysterious and like what what's he all about i mean I, he was talking on today's podcast he was actually on the podcast with, with, uh, with Chris jericho talking jericho and he was saying like the whole possession thing so maybe if he has their possession he's like kind of in their body they can do like that if they wanted to go really Undertake, Undertaker style, just, you know, really paranormal stuff. Um, they can do something like that. But yeah, I do like that. It adds more to his character. Yeah, it definitely does. But guys, that's our AW review and reaction for AW Homecoming Dynamite. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. Uh, make sure you tune in Friday for Friday Night SmackDown review and reaction. All got, also got some other stuff in the works. Stay tuned. Uh, CM Punk, Daniel Bryan video, and another kind of mm -hmm. conspiracy theory video I got in the works too. So make sure you stay tuned for all that stuff. We appreciate you guys for tuning into this one. Make sure you drop a like on this video. Hit the chair in the corner or hit your first sub to the channel. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Look at the box.